sort of review what we did there with the implicit and explicit methods, right? So we have this continuous equation. We're going to substitute in our finite difference approximations. We're going to break our continuous core, right? So we're all working in one dimension right now. So our core, we're going to break it up into a line of blocks. We're going to number those blocks from 1 to n. <laughs> And in this case, if you have a constant delta x, it's the total length divided by n is your delta x. Okay. When we substitute in the equations, we use a forward difference in time. Remembering our, subs our subscript superscript notation, the subscripts refer to space. These are grid block numbers. The superscripts refer to time. Those are time steps. So on the left-hand side, we have the both the same equation in both instances. On the right-hand side, we make the decision to evaluate the spatial derivative at time step n. That gives us an explicit method. If we make the decision to evaluate the time step at n plus 1, we get an implicit method. And again, we reviewed this at the beginning of class. We can rearrange to get this equation where everything on the right-hand side is known and the equations are decoupled in space. So then we can increment them in time and space. Actually, this is, this is in space, right? So these are writing the equations for each grid block in space. And you see that they're, that they're uncoupled in the sense that you know, these are all known. These are all known values. For the first time step, they use all old values, so they're all known. We talked about boundary conditions. We use the constant pressure on the left and a no flow on the right. But under, understand, you need, to under, you, you need to know how we did that because I could ask you for a constant pressure. I mean, you can't just take the equations and copy them, right? You have to understand how we got to those certain equations or the modifications we made. Because I could ask you for a no flow on the left and a constant pressure on the right. I could ask you for constant pressure on both sides. I could ask you for no flux or constant flux on both sides. Right. So the modification to the first equation when you have constant pressure boundary condition looks like that. No flow on the right looks like that. This is also known as the reflection technique because you're just reflecting the pressure from the nth to the nth plus one block. Okay. The stability criterion for the explicit method is that eta, which is this constant, a dimensionless parameter, has to be less than or equal for, to half. Stability in numerics means the errors will not grow without bound. Your simulation will not blow up. Right? The implicit method, we put the n plus 1s in. We rearrange the equation like this. Now they're coupled in space in the sense that the n plus 1s all appear here. You need to know all of them, or you need to solve for all of them simultaneously. You have to solve a linear system of equations. Making the modification for the boundary conditions, again, constant pressure on the right gives you this 1 plus 3 eta term. But again, understand how we did that, because I could ask you something different. No flow on the, on the right gives you this. Plug those into the matrix, and we get this. And we can solve this as a linear system of equations. 